Hey guys, I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about this topic. And I know this is the first video I'm uploading today. I've been, you know, kind of busy again. Like I said, I had something in the works that I'm preparing for um, the Patreon subscribers. So I was trying to get um, the content for that available um, for you guys. I've been doing that today. But um, I wanted to come on here and talk about this topic. Um, and if you see by the um, by the title of it, it's, it's referring to the, you know, sunscreen and the ineffectiveness of it. Now I want for a minute, you guys to sit here and take this in. Okay. You have a group of people who are basically genetic mutations running around pretending saying that they're, they're superior. Okay. So I just want you to take this in and I want you to understand something. The only superiority that Cogazoids hold is socially, okay? And the reason why the only benefit that there is to being a Cogazoid is social is because they already know there are no biological benefits to being a, a Cogazoid. There's no way that they, they will be able to hold up that argument when you bring and introduce biology into it because they have head lice, they get varicose vein, they burn in the sun, they have the lowest birth rate, they have the most birth defects, they're prone to the most diseases. They might sit here and tell you something about, oh, how are black people genetically superior when they get cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, all of those being environmental causes. Again, understand that everything that they pride this, themselves on are created concepts. Like even the, the concept of them having intelligence, it isn't really backed by anything naturally. They had to create a test. So because they don't, again, they don't have any evidence of even uh, intellectual ability beyond a test that they created. If you ask them, why and how are you smarter? What evidence do you have? They're only going to be able to, to um, direct you to the IQ test. But my thing is you shouldn't even really look at that or give it any merit because if you, what good is an I, I, intelligence quotient? that you create it if you can if you can use that intelligence to sustain the survival of your species that's what you should be asking see because when i look at intelligence i look at it as something that that's like it, it has to do that that works hand in hand with nature okay now nature and natural selection says your survival depends on your genetic code it doesn't say that it survives on a fabricated sense of intelligence it doesn't say any of that it doesn't say that if you have the ability to in invent a computer or iphone or a car which keep in mind they didn't even invent but let's entertain their lunacy for a, a few seconds and just pretend that hypothetically they did let's just say they did invent the, the, the computers, the, um, the iPhone, cell phone, internet, or whatever. None of those have the ability to sustain you, okay? None of those. We don't need computers. We don't need cell phones. We don't need, I, we don't need any of that. We don't need cars, okay? So let's just say we're talking of intelligence. Who's going to be more intelligent at the end of the day? The person that's able to create a, an iPhone but not be able to sustain the um, existence of their genetic code or the people who are not inventing the cell phones but are able to survive. Okay, so when we look at intelligence, if you're going by a Caucasoid definition of it and what they deem as intelligence, then of course you're going to come up short every time because their, um, their intelligence level isn't enabling them to do one basic thing and that's coincide and coexist with nature. And that's why we get to this argument about sunscreen because again, this white woman wrote this article, okay, because we already know the Caucasoid devil troll, they're going to come out here, and just because I'm reading it and interpreting the language in it, they're going to scream racism. We don't really care what they say. Bottom line is, if you troll this channel, knowing that it's not for you, then that is on you. You've clearly come on here to get um, your feelings hurt, but again, the Caucasoid devils, with their pathology, they have an obsession. And when you have an obsession, it doesn't matter what the drawbacks are to that. You just want to get your high. 
So in order for them to get some form of a high, they have to stalk and, and troll black people. And that's why you can't keep them away from something that, that black people is doing. Because at the end of the day, their entire identity is built up on black people. So they'll come on here and they'll mention mud huts in Africa, which mind you, they've never even been to. They lack the intelligence necessary to understand that it wouldn't matter if if Africa was the biggest shithole on the planet. Bottom line is America and no other country would be what it is without Africa because Africa is sustaining every other country. But again, these are people whose only evidence of their intelligence is the test that they created. But again, let I digress. You have this scenario where it's saying 73% of sunscreens don't work, but let this sink in. This group of superior people, intellectually and otherwise, cannot even find a method to prevent them from burning in the sun. Understand that nobody has this problem. You do not hear anyone else complaining about this but Caucasoids. If anybody can find me one group of people that sit around talking about sunscreen and how it's ineffective and having to lather on a chemical so that they don't burn in the sun all the while claiming to be ancient Egyptians, please point them out for me. Because I need to see, I need to understand these people. Now, we know for a fact that sunscreen is a relatively new creation, okay? Because nobody really needed to think about a sunblock or anything to protect them from the sun because everybody, for the most part, especially during ancient times, was highly melanated. So even during that time, if you would have had someone come with the concept of putting a chemical on their skin to block the sun, Nobody would have understood that any more back then than they do today because a lot of black people don't understand how white people think it's normal that they can't go out into the sun without sunscreen, although everyone else can. And nobody really is complaining about all of these things of we need to protect ourselves from being out in the sun. Nobody does that, okay? Nobody does that but them. But I want to get to something just while we're on the topic of, of, of ancient Egypt because, Egyptians, because this is something that these Caucasoid devils want to cling to. For some reason, they're desperate to be Africans, all the while com um, making negative comments about Africans and getting surgeries to get um, features that look like Africans. But I want to show you guys something real quick. Now... Even when you talk about ancient Egyptians, this, clearly them painting themselves black wasn't enough for these Caucasoid devils, again, who are desperate, okay? Because there really isn't any evidence to substantiate any of their claims of superiority or um, like a level of inter intellect that supersedes every. There's really no evidence of that. All evidence points to them being lazy and inferior and them not being really, really being able to accomplish anything without the help of other people. But again, this is a delusional group of people. So you have Herodotus, who was a Greek person back in Egypt, okay? And this was a Greek historian and he kind of just went around documenting things, right? And I'm going to give you a little bit more context on it. I want you to be able to see what, what this is. And then we're even going to go to google search if this isn't enough for them but you have it where they're saying let me start with the endlessly repeated herodotus said the egyptians had black skin and woolly hair okay so this is consistent with how egyptians actually painted themselves by the way so all of this fabricated white egyptian is simply as much of a myth as their make-believe history of them in inventing something which they wouldn't invent anything because they weren't working again this is the laziest group of people but this is herodotus actual quote where he's talking about a group of people saying the koshians he said the koshians are obviously egyptian when the notion occurred to me, I asked both the Koshians and the Egyptians about it and found that the Koshians had better recall of the Egyptians than the Egyptians did of them. Some Egyptians said that they thought the Koshians originated with um, Sotris's army, but I myself guessed the, their Egyptian origin 
not not only because the the Koshians are dark skinned and curly hair. So he's relating the Koshians to the likeness of Egyptians based on their dark skin and curly hair, which means from his um from his point of view, the Egyptians had dark skin and curly hair. Now, even if you go with this notion that they're saying, oh, the Egyptians weren't white, but they weren't black, they were Arab and Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern and Arabs of today, although the original ones looked just like Africans, they those people aren't dark skin. Nobody would consider them dark skin except white people because, of course, white people really don't have any color. So anything that's darker than white to them is dark skin. But by nobody's term would a Middle Eastern be dark skin, and they don't have wooly hair. So anyways, he's saying these are dark skin and curly hair, which does not count for much itself because these features are common in others too. But more importantly, because Koshians, Egyptians, and Ethiopians, who are all Africans, are the only people in the world who practice circumcision and um, who have always done so, okay? Now, you would, this says you will find translations where black skin and wooly hair are used, but the term melon crows, which was translated to mean black in some versions, was used to describe any tin scones from bronzed to black. But again, bronzed isn't even the color of an Arab or a Middle Eastern. That's not bronze because bronze is like a dark copper color. So that wouldn't even fit the description of them. So again, this is just delusional caucasoids. But again, most importantly, they cannot tell you how these white ancient Egyptians would have survived the African heat without sunscreen. When keep in mind, they're complaining today in 70 degree weather. Don't Egypt, like to my knowledge, maintain a temperature of like 100 degrees or somewhere to that, that effect? So how did you survive in 100 degree weather without the presence of sunscreen? I, I, need, I, do, I need to know that. Since you guys have such a high IQ, please tell me the brand name and the strength of the sunscreen that these white ancient Egyptians used. I need to know that. And through use and, and the um through usage translates as dark, as is seen in the piece of text from Homer's Odyssey. With this, Athena touched him with her golden wand, a well-washed cloak, and a tunic she first of all cast about his breast, and since and she I mean and she increased his stature and his youthful bloom. Once more he grew dark of color. Melon Troy's and his cheek filled out and dark grew the beard about his chin. And now you can look at a, a lot of other of um, Herodotus's quote, but I want to go but to Google really quickly. Now, when you look at Herodotus, the first thing that you put in there when you put in Herodotus' description of Egyptians, he says, according to most translations, Herodotus stated that a Greek oracle was known to be from Egypt because she was black. That the natives of the Nile region are black with heat and that Egyptians were black skinned with wooly hair. That is not a white person. Okay, so at this point, white people, you're just believing your own stupidity just for the sake of believing it. And this is why nobody's taking you serious and your dumb white Egyptian movies are flopping. When you explain to me how these white Egyptians, despite everybody saying that they were black, but again, this is the mentality of a group of Caucasoid devils to think that they can just say something and then merely saying it makes it true. Because again, they've been running around saying that they're smart, but they're not exhi exhibiting or showing intelligence. They've been saying that they're moral, but they run around committing the most crimes. So you can sit here and say whatever you want to as a caucasoid devil. That doesn't mean that we're going to believe you. And as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't even be here. Because why, why are you around black people and on black people's posts when we don't really go around and try to figure out what you're doing and saying? Like we just don't do that. I don't understand why they don't check their own pathology and how this doesn't relate to an obsession for them. But I'm waiting for the Caucasoid devil that comes on here and says that black, that the Egyptians were white 
or that the Egyptians were Arab because even now Arabs have to wear sunscreen or cover themselves from head to toe in order to not burn from the, in the sun. And again, Arabs and Middle Easterns are considered white. So once again, I'll ask, how did these white Egyptians, because these are white ancient Egyptians, so these are thousands of years ago. This Herodotus was from um, the 5th century or the 5th dynasty. That's a long, long time ago, okay? So the bottom line of it is, is that you didn't have sunscreen existing. I would really like to know, how did they survive? Now, I want you guys to look at this sunscreen history, okay? Because keep in mind, they're saying that they're ancient Egyptians. 1938 says a Swiss chemistry student named Franz, whatever his last name is, suffered sunburn while climbing Mount, on the Swiss-Australian border. Now, they can't even survive the heat of the Swiss-Australian -Austr border but they think they were ancient Egyptians in the sweltering heat of Africa. Keep in mind, they need prescription grade sunscreen to be in there now. So I don't know what their mindset is in terms of evolution or whatever, but how do you go as a white person from being an ancient African where you can just survive in the, the sun and the heat of 120 degrees up to that without burning, but then now in, in, in 1930s, Somehow you just can't do that. You've lost your ability to be around the sun. So you need to prevent to, buy, to get sunscreen. Okay. So now we already know that this is the timeline for the invention of sunscreen. Okay. This is the timeline for it. If the first day that you see is 1938, where, please tell me caucasoids, where these ancient, white ancient Egyptians or Arab ancient Egyptians or non-heavily melanated, black, dark-skinned ancient Egyptians, which is what really they were described as, as black skin and dark skin. And an Arab isn't dark skin. A white person isn't dark skin. But let's entertain their foolishness for a minute because this is their psyche. How did they survive in the sun? Because this is the, the, the timeline for this sunscreen. This is what it is. So I need to understand... And the reason I'm pointing this out to you because I want you to understand how illogical their mindset is and why you should not take anything that they say with any merit. Because if they can't explain to you something small, like if sunscreen did not exist until the inception of it didn't even exist until 1938, how did you have white ancient Egyptians who weren't burning in the sun? I need to understand that. That's really what I need to understand. But let's go back to this because, again, these are the world's smartest people, and they can't even they can't even perfect their their sunblock that is abnormal, right? And again, understand that the reason why they use in a picture of white people because this is a white people situation. But let's get into the art, um, thing. She said, I recently took a trip to Turks and Caicos with some friends and their daughters for a week-long vacation. One of the first things I did was make sure the teenage girls took notice of the very dark, very ugly scar on my chest, a result from surgery to remove skin cancer. But these are superior beings. These are superior beings, okay? These are superior beings, which, by the way, when a black person gets skin cancer, it's usually not from the sun. It's actually from bleaching their skin, but whatever. Let's still go. You're getting sunscreen from sitting out in the sun. I've sat out in the sun many times for hours on end. I do not get any type of sunburn. They were grossed out, but they got the message. Worshiping the sun without protecting your skin can lead to skin cancer. Um, only if you're white, though. Because again, nobody else really sits here and complains about sunscreen. I, I don't. Sunscreen generally is relatively non-existent in the black community. We simply don't use it. And so they can sit here and talk about whether we can survive in the cold or not. Okay, you can say whatever you want to. Black people are not getting frostbite if they don't put on a chemical before winter comes. But we, there cannot be even any sun in the sky. And you can best believe if there's some UV rays pre present. And if these inferior genetically recessive burn in the sun, caucasoid devils don't lather on an chemical, which, by the way, is ineffective in killing them, but they're so smart, then they're going to burn. 
Again, they can't tell you why their intelligence hasn't enabled them to find a way to, number one, not burn in the sun, and number two, sustain their existence, but they're smart. And let, but let's continue. That can lead to ugly, visible scars, and that's if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, it can lead to a considerably more serious health problem. They haven't gotten a clue that they just don't need to be here. Fortunately, these girls have grown up with the knowledge that sunscreen is important and have been slathered and sprayed most of their lives, unlike my generation, which thought using baby oil to get darker faster was a brilliant idea. But not all products designed to protect skin from the sun are created equally. Again, nobody, nobody deals with this. But these are superior Caucasoid devils, y'all. These are the, the ones that are running around, superior to everybody else, with lice in their hair and varicose vein, and apparently they can't even figure out how to not burn in the sun, okay? But, but they always want to go somewhere where the sun... Why are you in Turks and Caicos? I don't know why they're not in their cave. According to the Environmental Working Group 2007's Guide to Sunscreens, almost three-fourths of the products the group examined offer inferior sun protection or contain worrisome ingredients like oxybenzone, a hormone disruptor, or retinol palmitate, a form of vitamin A that may harm skin. Again, they're so smart, but they can't even create an event and then an appropriate form of not burning in the sun but they want you to believe that they invented much more complex things like computer cell phones and automobiles this is what they want you to believe and unfortunately a lot of black people have bought into their bullshit and and i don't i, just, I don't understand it i really don't understand it i'm really feeling like i must be in a parallel universe I don't understand this universe where you would have black people who are clearly able to do everything that they can do 10 times better and more. And yet you love these inferior peasants who shouldn't even be here. And every time they walk out in the sun, the universe tells them, I don't want you here. Go back to your cave. But you still love them and I don't understand it. The vast majority of sunscreens available to Americans, again, uh, Americans don't use sunscreen cave beasts and cave mutants who just shouldn't even be here using. That, that's the, the main thing, the reason, let me tell you, even if there wasn't a system of white supremacy, I'm not dating anybody that can't go out in the sun with me without lathering on a chemical, because you're suspect, as far as I'm concerned, if the one life-giving thing gives it tends to, to kill you, and it's only you that's worrying about it. So to me, that that's suspect, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not dating you, because I don't date people who can't go out in the sun without lathering on a chemical. And then that very chemical that you're putting on is number one, ineffective, and two, killing you too. So clearly, uh, haven't you realized that the sun and the universe is just not that into you? I don't understand how they have, they've missed that memo. Anyway, said Sonia Lunder, senior research analyst at EWG and the lead author of the guide. Sunscreens will not improve until the Food and Drug Administration sets stronger rules, reviews harmful chemicals, and allow the use of new ingredients that offer stronger UV protection. Really, you guys are so, I'm not, I'm over it. The guide helps consumers choose the best sunscreen for their needs, and it's not as easy as choosing the can or tube with the highest SPF, sun protection factor. I, I can't, like, really. I'm really sitting here reading an article about some people that call themselves humans who can't be in the sun, although all other humans can. But they will argue you up and down that these Egyptians were white, as if they don't know that, number one, Egypt is in Africa, which is really hot. Um, which has the sun blazing and blaring uh, constantly. And um, number two is that uh, you didn't have any sunscreen during that time. So therefore, anybody with the smallest bit of logic or critical thinking could very easily break up their, their argument because they have no argument. The proof is in, the, in their genetics. In fact, they may give people a false sense of safety spending more time in the sun or not reapplying sunscreen because they assume the higher SPF will last longer than it does. 
Oh my God, I can. In fact, in 2011, the FDA proposed capping SPF values at 50 plus, as most other industrialized countries do since the higher numbers don't make a significant difference. If you have to do this much work just to be in the natural element called the sun, you do not belong here. You are not a native to this planet. You're not a human. Animals don't even sit here and debate what chemical they use to get in the sun. They don't. Bugs don't even do that. The rule has yet to be finalized, and while the FDA have held off a final decision, the number of sunscreens that claim an SPF of 70 and higher are increasing? Really? So what are you going to have? SPF 1,000? But you're superior, though. In 2007, when the EWG published its first annual sunscreen guide, only 10 sunscreens they looked at had an SPF of 70 or higher. This year, there are 69 products with an SPF over 70. This is pathetic. What to look for in a sunscreen? Look, y'all can go over this. What to avoid in a sunscreen? This is pathetic. If this is an inferiority written all over it, I, I don't understand it. And there's a reason why they're only showing white people on here. So they can sit here and tell you all day, every day, that black people get sunscreen, sun can, skin cancer, and can burn from in the sun. Uh, okay, well, why are there so many pictures of you being the only one sunburned? Now, I want to close this video off with this because. These are superior. These are the superior people to you. Just red and just unnatural. Look at the look at the baby over here just peeling. These are superior people. Just by the way, these are your superior sunburned, like pig skin, white people. Like look at this. No black person has ever dealt with anything like this. Show me one. But these are ancient Egyptians, okay? Look at this, really? These are the ones that will tell you white skin is, the dark skin is a curse from God and white skin is, symbolizes God's favor. <laughs> really, this, this is what they wanna tell you. I don't know why they have black people with vitiligo in here, by which this is vitiligo. This doesn't have anything to do with the sun. This is vitiligo. Um, <sighs> now, it's interesting that they have this, and they have, they say black people very rarely get burnt, have a large amount of melanin. Rarely get burnt, are always tanned. And they, they're going to say Arabic, Asian people, Latin people. Do not get burnt very much. Always get tanned very well. Um, Dark-haired people fairly get burnt, gradually get tanned. Fair-haired people easily get burnt, do not get tanned very much. Which, mind you, these are white people up here, the three ones. And it's, notice how they're going to do everybody else by their race, but then when it comes to them, they're going to do it by their hair color. No, that's called white. Red hair people with freckles belonging to the Celtic race easily get burnt, never get tanned, reddened. You see how they do that? <laughs> and then they're telling you right here in a different way, like this is pathetic, but this is them being superior. That, this is them being superior. This is them being superior. Keep in mind, they're trying to tell you that they're humans. So I just want you to look at this. But these are them being humans. This is them being humans. Well, like, yeah, it's really... But they convince you guys, and they've somehow convinced people that they're superior, and I don't understand it. So if there's a troll on deck, like I said, please do name the brand and the SPF um, number of the sunscreen that these white ancient Egyptians used. 
I want to understand that. I really do want to. Please tell me why now you see those fake Egyptians in Egypt who have to be covered from head to toe to not burn in the sun. But when you look at pictures of ancient Egyptians, they're, they're dark skinned, just like Herodotus described them. They're dark skinned with wooly hair and they're not covered up and they're out in the blazing sun and they're not burning. And they don't have tails. Can somebody explain that to me? I want you guys to let me know what you think about this. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, but they weren't black. They were Arab and Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern than Arabs of today, although the original ones looked just like Africans, they, those people aren't dark-skinned. Nobody would consider them dark-skinned except white people because, of course, white people really don't have any color. So anything that's darker than white to them is dark-skinned. But by nobody's term would a Middle Eastern be dark-skinned, and they don't have wooly hair. So anyways, he's saying these are dark skin and curly hair, which does not count for much itself because these features are common in others too. But more importantly, because Colchians, Egyptians, and Ethiopians, who are all Africans, are the only people in the world who practice circumcision and um, who have always done so, okay? Now, you, this says you will find translations where black skin and wooly hair are used, but the term melon crows, which was translated to mean black in some versions, was used to describe any tin scones from bronzed to black. But again, bronzed isn't even the color of an Arab or a Middle Eastern. That's not bronze because bronze is like a dark copper color. So that wouldn't even fit the description of them. So again, this is just delusional caucasoids. But again, most importantly, they cannot tell you how these white ancient Egyptians would have survived the African heat without sunscreen. When keep in mind, they're complaining today in 70 degree weather. Don't Egypt, like to my knowledge, maintain a temperature of like 100 degrees or somewhere to that that effect so how did you survive in 100 degree weather without the presence of sunscreen i, I need i do i need to know that since you guys have such a high iq please tell me the brand name and the strength of the sunscreen that these white ancient egyptians use i need to know that and through youth and, and the, um, through usage translates as dark, as seen in the piece of text from Homer's Odyssey. With this, Athena touched him with her golden wand, a well washed cloak, and a tunic she first of all cast about his breast and since to get um, features that look like Africans. But I want to show you guys something real quick. Now, even when you talk about ancient Egyptians, this, uh, clearly them painting themselves black wasn't enough for these Caucasoid devils, again, who are desperate, okay? Because there really isn't any evidence to substantiate any of their claims of superiority or um, like a level of inter intellect that supersedes every. There's really no evidence of that. All evidence points to them being lazy and inferior and them not being really, really being able to accomplish anything without the help of other people. But again, this is a delusional group of people. So you have Herodotus, who was a Greek person back in Egypt, okay? And this was a Greek historian and he kind of just went around documenting things, right? And I'm going to give you a little bit more context on it. I want you to be able to see what, what this is. And then we're even going to go to Google search if this isn't enough for them. But you have it where they're saying, let me start with the endlessly repeated, Herodotus said the Egyptians have black skin and wooly hair, okay? So this is consistent with how Egyptians actually painted themselves, by the way. So all of this fabricated white Egyptian is simply as much of a myth as their make-believe history of them in inventing something, which they wouldn't invent anything because they weren't working. Again, this is the laziest group of people. But this is Herodotus' actual quote. 
where he's talking about a group of people saying the Koshians. He said, the Koshians are obviously Egyptian. When the notion occurred to me, I asked both the Koshians and the Egyptians about it and found that the Koshians had better recall of the Egyptians than the Egyptians did of them. Some Egyptians said that they thought the Koshians originated with um, Sotris's army, but I myself guessed the, their Egyptian origin, not, not only because the, the Koshians are dark skinned and curly hair. So he's relating the Koshians to the likeness of Egyptians based on their dark skin and curly hair, which means from his, um, from his point of view, the Egyptians had dark skin and curly hair. Now, even if you go with this notion that they're saying, oh, the Egyptians weren't white, because at the end of the day, their entire identity is built up on black people. So they'll come on here and they'll mention mud huts in Africa, which mind you, they've never even been to. They lack the intelligence necessary to understand that it wouldn't matter if, if Africa was the biggest shithole on the planet. Bottom line is America and no other country would be what it is without Africa because Africa is sustaining every other country. But again, these are people whose only evidence of their intelligence is the test that they created. But again, let, I digress. You have this scenario where it's saying 73% of sunscreens don't work, but let this sink in. This group of superior people, intellectually and otherwise, cannot even find a method to prevent them from burning in the sun. Understand that nobody has this problem. You do not hear anyone else complaining about this but Caucasoids. If anybody can find me, one group of people that sit around talking about sunscreen and how it's ineffective and having to lather on a chemical so that they don't burn in the sun all the while claiming to be ancient Egyptians, please point them out for me. Because I need to see, I need to understand these people. Now, we know for a fact that sunscreen is a relatively new creation, okay? Because nobody really needed to think about a sunblock or anything to protect them from the sun because everybody, for the most part, especially during ancient times, was highly melanated. So even during that time, if you would have had someone come with the concept of putting a chemical on their skin to block the sun, nobody would have understood that any more back then than they do today because a lot of black people don't understand how white people think it's normal that they can't go out into the sun without sunscreen although everyone else can and nobody really is complaining about all of these things of we need to protect ourselves from being out in the sun nobody does that okay nobody does that but them but I want to get to something just while we're on the topic of, of, of ancient Egypt's because, Egyptians, because this is something that these Caucasoid devils want to cling to. For some reason, they're desperate to be Africans, all the while com um, making negative comments about Africans and getting surgeries. Hey guys, I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about this topic. And I know this is the first video I'm uploading today. I've been, you know, kind of busy again. Like I said, I had something in the works that I'm preparing for um, the Patreon subscribers. So I was trying to get um, the content for that available um, for you guys. I've been doing that today. But um, I wanted to come on here and talk about this topic. Um, and if you see by the um by the title of it it's it's referring to the you know sunscreen and the ineffectiveness of it now i want for a minute you guys to sit here and take this in okay you have a group of people who are basically genetic mutations running around pretending saying that they're they're superior okay so i just want you to take this in and i want you to understand something the only superiority that Caucasoids hold is socially, okay? And the reason why the only benefit that there is to being a Caucasoid is social is because they already know there are no biological benefits to being a, a Caucasoid. There's no way that they, they will be able to hold up that argument when you bring and introduce biology into it because they have head lice, they get varicose vein, they burn in the sun, they have the lowest birth rate, they have the most birth defects. 
they're prone to the most diseases. They might sit here and tell you something about, oh, how are black people genetically superior when they get cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, all of those being environmental causes. Again, understand that everything that they pride this, themselves on are created concepts. Like even the, the concept of them having intelligence, it isn't really backed by anything naturally. They had to create a test. So, because they don't, again, they don't have any evidence of even uh, intellectual ability beyond a test that they created. If you ask them, why and how are you smarter? What evidence do you have? They're only going to be able to, to um, direct you to the IQ test. But my thing is you shouldn't even really look at that or give it any merit because if you, what good is an I, I, intelligence quotient? that you created if you can if you can use that intelligence to sustain the survival of your species that's what you should be asking see because when i look at intelligence i look at it as something that that's like it, it has to do that that works hand in hand with nature okay now nature and natural selection says your survival depends on your genetic code it doesn't say that it survives on a fabricated sense of intelligence it doesn't say any of that it doesn't say that if you have the ability to in invent a computer or iphone or a car which keep in mind they didn't even invent but let's entertain their lunacy for a, a few seconds and just pretend that hypothetically they did let's just say they did invent the, the, the computers, the, um, the iPhone, cell phone, internet, or whatever. None of those have the ability to sustain you, okay? None of those, we don't need computers, we don't need cell phones, we don't need, I, we don't need any of that. We don't need cars, okay? So let's just say we're talking of intelligence. Who's going to be more intelligent at the end of the day? The person that's able to create a, an iPhone, but not be able to sustain the um, existence of their genetic code, or the people who are not inventing the cell phones, but are able to survive. Okay, so when we look at intelligence, if you're going by a Caucasoid definition of it and what they deem as intelligence, then of course you're going to come up short every time because their, um, their intelligence level isn't enabling them to do one basic thing and that's coincide and coexist with nature. And that's why we get to this argument about sunscreen because again, this white woman wrote this article, okay? Because we already know the Caucasoid devil trolls are going to come out here and just because I'm reading it and interpreting the language in it, they're going to scream racism. We don't really care what they say. Bottom line is if you troll this channel, knowing that it's not for you, then that is on you. You've clearly come on here to get um, your feelings hurt. But again, the Caucasoid devils with their pathology, they have an obsession and when you have an obsession, it doesn't matter what the drawbacks are to that. You just want to get your high. So in order for them to get some form of a high, they have to stalk and, and troll black people. And that's why you can't keep them away from something that, that black people is doing. Because